Hi everybody, Zeev Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master, the surgical training for dentists. Welcome to another quick lecture, and this time I'm going to talk about the continuous suture. This is part of a larger training program on suturing, and in the previous videos I talked about the X suture and the horizontal mattress. I hope you were able to see the videos, understand them. If you didn't, go back, check them out because it'll be very important for you, very useful to you to get started with these sutures so you can improve your techniques. I also started describing the nine laws of suturing that have to do with suturing safety, the choice of material, and also the suture mechanics. And I described to you the first law of suturing. And the first law is very simple, slow suturing. If you suture slowly, you're much more accurate and precise, you're promoting safety, and all in all, you're getting a better technique, better suturing and surgical outcome, and all it takes is just to slow down and you, you'll definitely get better. The second uh, law of suturing has to do with the flap. It has to do with respecting the flap. Uh, your goal is to approximate tissue, create some stability, bleeding control, and you need to make sure that you handle your flaps with extreme care, use the proper instruments that are uh, least traumatic. You should also minimize the number of sutures, uh, use the minimal amount of sutures to achieve your, your outcome, because every time you pass a needle through a flap, that's literally a perforation that creates trauma, creates compromise to the blood supply, and may create problems. So the least you perforate the flap, and literally the least sutures you place to achieve your goal, the better it is. And also where you engage the flap is also very important. So when you engage the flap, enter it about two to three millimeters from the edge. If you're too close to the edge, that may create perforations and tearing of the flap. And we found out that about two to three millimeters is a fairly safe distance that can work for you and will be also stable throughout the healing period when the tissues swell. So it is important in order to respect the flaps, it is important to use instruments that are the least traumatic possible. So any instrument that has teeth that create trauma, uh, it could be one, two, or three teeth or more, uh, I would avoid them, especially for the procedures that I'm describing to you, because that will pretty much traumatize the flaps and will compromise your results. So choose your instruments carefully, ideally instruments with no teeth. They could be, could be lightly serrated, like cotton pliers, or they could be um, completely flat. Uh, but uh, they, they should do their job by holding the flap in place uh, with minimal trauma. Um, also in regards to the number of sutures, use the least number of sutures to achieve your goal. Uh, and the goal is basically to minimize your bleeding, hemostasis, approximate the tissue, and create some stability. So actually, when you suture, less suturing is better, less is more. And as long as you achieve your res results, your flaps are stable, there's no bleeding, and the tissue is well approximated, uh, you will get a good outcome with minimal trauma. And also in regards to the engagement into the flap, you need to be at a safe distance from the edge, and we're looking at about two to three millimeters. If you're a little bit too close, you may have perforations, you may have tearing of flaps, uh, it could be during the procedure or later on. And if you enter the, the flap about two to three millimeters from the edge, typically that would be a safe distance. So the second law of suturing is to respect your flap and handle them with care use least, the least sutures uh, possible, and also focus on your entry and exit points. In the future videos, I'm going to talk about the third law of suturing has to do with safety, and definitely describe all the other laws so you have a good understanding um, of suturing, and uh, all in all, get, you will get better at it uh, and get better, better outcomes. In this video, I'm going to talk about the continuous suture that is a very useful suture when 
uh, you work on large flaps, it's also very time effective or efficient because it allows you to suture a large flap relatively quick and also using less material because you're placing less knots. Uh, however, uh, this type of suture has a few disadvantages and the main disadvantage is that there's a risk that your sutures uh, and your knots will uh, loosen up and your flap will open whether during the procedure or during the suturing or uh, later on during the healing period. So there's definitely some advantages and some disadvantages, uh, but it's a, it's a very important uh, suture to understand. So again, we have our straight incision line. We have our surgical compass on the upper left-hand side. We typically like to start suturing from distal to mesial in the mesial direction. It's more for visibility. And every uh, continuous suture starts with a simple interrupted suture. So in this case, I'm entering the distal buckle flap and exiting through the distal lingual. And at this point, what you're doing, you're creating a simple, interu sim simple interrupted suture. Uh, once you tie the knot, uh, what you want to do when you uh, cut the suture is only to cut the short end. If you cut both, you just created a simple interrupted. So if you, uh, what you need to do and let your assistant know is to cut only the short end and this way you create an anchoring suture. And the anchoring suture, the knot stability has to be uh, pretty much perfect because if your anchor is not stable, your whole suture uh, will not work, it will open up um, relatively quickly. So to uh, proceed with the continuous suture, uh, the next entry point is going to be through the mesolingual exiting through the mesiobuckle and pulling the suture through. And then we continue the same pattern, entry through the mesiolingual and exit through the mesiobuckle. And as we pass the needle and the suture through both flaps, back and forth, mesiolingual to mesiobuckle, you will see that both edges of the flap are getting approximated, and that's our goal. And it's it can be done relatively quick. In order to finalize this suture, you will leave uh, a short loop at the end and you'll treat it as the short end. And when the time comes to uh, tie the knot, you will um, take your needle, you, you'll create your, um, your twists around it, around your instrument, tie the knot around the short loop, and at this point, um, basically use your scissors to cut all three threads and that's what we call the ending knot. So a continuous suture has an anchoring knot and an ending knot, and the suturing itself is relatively uh, fast, using uh, the least suture material possible. Now, the problem that we have with this type of suture is that it's really not stable enough. These, um, this suture can open very, very easily, and then we're defeating the purpose of suturing. So one option is to create some interlocking. So let me show you how this works. We again start with the uh, simple interrupted with our anchoring suture. We are engaging the mesiolingual exiting through the mesiobuckle. And instead of pulling the uh, suture, the thread, all the way through, we will keep a little loop. And what we do with this loop, we'll take the needle and we'll pass it through. So pass it through the loop and as you pull your needle and suture towards a buckle direction, you will create what is called a single interlocking. Okay, so throughout the continuous suture, we will place several interlockings to create some safeties. And this will uh, help us in preventing the uh, opening of the suture. And so again, how, how does it work? We enter again the mesiolingual, exit through the mesiobuckle. Don't pull it all the way through leave a little loop and pass the needle through the loop. It doesn't matter which direction, uh, but as long as you pass it through and pull the needle and suture towards the buckle, you will create one interlocking. And when you create a long continuous suture, create multiple interlocking sutures. And when you get to the uh, end of the flap on the mesial aspect, again, you leave a loop, this time you will not pass the needle through it, but you'll tie the knot, you look at the loop, you'll consider the loop as the short end, and you'll tie the knot. 
And this is how you create a continuous suture with interlockings, with some, uh, some safeties, okay? With our anchoring suture and our ending knot, okay? Continuous suture with interlocking. Now, if you look very carefully, and if you have a little bit of experience, uh, you definitely know that uh, perhaps this is not the most uh, stable suture still. It's still not stable enough because uh, this type of interlocking uh, can also open up and create some problems and then the whole thing will open. So the continuous with a single interlocking is not stable enough. What I'd like to do, and that will be in um, part two, continuous suture part two, I will show you the solution for that, how we can create the continuous suture with interlocking that is very secure, very safe, and it doesn't open during, doesn't open during uh, the uh, uh, healing period. So I hope this uh, video on the continuous suture was uh, helpful, useful to you. I hope you are um, able to apply it. I'll definitely show you how to make it better in part two. I also hope that the uh, first law of uh, suturing are already helping you if you're suturing uh, slowly, improving your techniques, and if you're uh, uh, respecting your flaps, you're handling them with care, uh, minimizing the number of sutures, the numbers of number of perforations into the flap, and also uh, focusing on engaging the flap in the appropriate distance from the edges to uh, prevent the tearing and uh, other issues. So I look forward to meeting you and seeing you in part two of the continuous suture. I'll offer some solutions for that. And also encourage you to visit me at the, at my, on my website, uh, surgicalmaster.com, where you can opt in and add your name and email. And this way we can keep in touch and we ca I can send you my weekly blogs and videos and we can interact and get better about what we do. So I really look forward to seeing you and working with you in the future. And I'll see you in part two of the Continuous Suture.